Now let us talk about the cell cycle. So what do we mean by a cell cycle? Cell cycle is a complete process of cell division. So cell division starts in a particular point and then the cell grows and the du duplication of DNAs and finally uh, the break, uh, then the alignment of those DNAs and the separation of DNAs and finally we have the cytokinesis, I mean the, the division of cells, cellular cytoplasm and after that we end up with the formation of new cells and throughout this process and the whole process is called cell cycle. If we look at cell cycle we have two stages actually, we have interphase and we have mitotic phase. So in the interphase, this is the most. Th this contains the most of the time of the cell cycle. Uh, maximum time it consumes the maximum time because this interphase, the cells are actually preparing for growing and dividing, preparing for dividing. So you can talk about is the marriage ceremony because in case of marriage ceremony, ceremonies, uh, this. Uh, growing or all this purpose to make uh, that thing happen uh, it takes a longer time to arrange that marriage it, it takes a longer time to to m to make shoppings to have all this type of uh, to the to the invitation card has to be published and all these things it takes longer time than the marriage so marriage day will be one day but before the marriage day it it, it is it will be a work of one or two months so it's it is an analogy how the cell cycle is actually working in case of interphase it takes a longer time because the cell is arranging all the necessary ingredients for the cell division which is actually is going to take place in the mitotic phase so after the cell the cell arranges all those things in g1 phase which is a growth one phase means the cell is growing rapidly in this phase and the growth of cell when it uh, reaches its peak then the synthesis phase comes in uh, what do you mean by synthesis phase is then this the then uh, the cell starts to divide their dna to copy their dna via replication process and they duplicate they are duplicating their dna's and after the duplication of dna is completed then it enters another uh, phase which is g2 phase to produce a few uh, few kind few let me say uh, enzymes which are required for in this mitotic cell division and also produce some of those proteins which are necessary for mitotic cell division and con and some proteins which actually co will will control uh, the cell division during this cyto uh, this is mitosis phase and when they aggregate all those proteins and they'll enters the mitotic phase and after the entering into the mitotic phase there is no going back they have to divide so if the cell wants to divide or not they have to decide in this interface if they do not have sufficient proteins or sufficient things to divide they will stall and, and they, they can have this interface for a long period of time for example we have our red blood cells where the in this interface state is going on all the time the cells are going on in this stage but they are not dividing they are actually arresting into another phase which is called the S0 phase uh, it's like of cellular hibernation. The cell is uh, taking this as zero phase. That means it is not going to divide any time. Our RBC cells, uh, when, when they are young, they are dividing. But when they are, uh, but w so so when they are w young, dividing. But when they are uh, adult, uh, when in adult state, they are not dividing any anymore. Uh, in this case, okay. So they are producing from from different set of cells uh, via the cellular morph morphogenesis. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the mitotic phase. So in the mitotic phase, we have five different sets of phases that's gonna make the cell divide. So all the cellular e e events where that can be purely visible via the light microscope is done in this mitotic phase. So all those nucleus arrangement, the the, nu the gone of the nuclear membrane and the arrangement of chromosomes in the center plate of mm, a cell, which we call the metaphase plate and after the metabolic formation the division all these things taking place in the mitotic phase so if you look at this mitotic phase we're talking about uh, five instinct phases so what are these five phases we have prophase we have prometaphase we have telophase uh, anaphase uh, and this then uh, the uh, cytokines okay so what we have we have prophase we have prometaphase again third is the uh, metaphase and fourth is the anaphase and fifth is the telophase and and, fi and, and this is the part of this mitosis uh, meiotic division actually we call it the meiotic division in this meiotic division the in first uh, division we call the prophase and this prophase we are seeing here uh, 
this is a real picture of all the cells which are going through the cell cycle or cell division this is a schematic presentation what is going what is the what is the importance of these phases in in this uh, prophase stage uh, which will uh, which was the first visible state what is going on this this nuclear uh, this nuclear uh, structure actually this nuclear membrane structure is actually uh, going uh, go going to be fade okay so this nuclear envelope is going to be vanished it is degraded by some enzymes okay a nuclear lamina is gone and is it is degraded after the degradation of this nuclear envelope the uh, the chromosomes are naked out into the cell so this state has to become in case of every eukaryotic cells though we have the nuclear envelope in case of bacterial cells and many protist cells they do not have this uh, nuclear envelope so they do not have to go through this step so they have only the release of those chromosomes together so in this prophase what we are doing we are actually uh, deleting this uh, nuclear envelope and uh, aligning those chromosomes together and w and another very important uh, thing is going on the formation of ester what do you mean by the formation of ester is the microtubule reaction of this microtubule organizing center center so remember we have only one microtubule organizing center before the cell division but in growth phase 2 this this microtubule organizing center or centriole so is going to divide so centriole is going to divide into two centriole centriole 1 and centriole 2 because they will be needed in the cell division in the prophase these centrioles are going to uh, move towards the opposite pole of the cell so they are going to move they move towards the opposite pole of the cell and not only they are moving towards but they are also producing microtubules so what are the microtubules as we know microtubules are arranged together to make microtubule fibers and they are rapidly dynamic uh, instability so we have positive ends there we have negative ends towards the formation of that Uh, microtubule organizing center so what is going on uh, so, so so this is the positive side this is the negative side so we i've drawn it uh, wrong way so in this negative side where uh, we have rapid dissociation and rapid association in both things going on uh, so it is actually shrinking all the time so this is growing and then shrinking so growing and shrinking all the time this growing shrinking phase is going on and when it is going on it it is eventually going to attach with uh, the centrosome or centrosome portion of this chromosomes okay because as we know the chromosomes are duplicated in in this uh, in the synthesis phase of interphase and uh, after the division uh, after the, the the duplication of those chromosomes the chromosomes has to be attached with this uh, spindle fibers so when it attaches with the spindle fibers they are actually arranging so in this phase of pro metaphase they are not arranging uh, properly but they are trying to arrange themselves so that is called as a pro metaphase so is is the earlier phase of metaphase and in metaphase these chromosomes are aligned in a perfectly manner and they are aligned with the help of this microtubules so as you know microtubules has a positive end and it has a negative end and in what you mean the positive end it is going on uh, to form it negative end will be dissociating so this uh, growing and dissociating phase it has to be encountered with the with a special portion of the chromosome which we called a kinetic core so what is a kinetic core a kinetic core means a portion which is really uh, closer to the centrosome where the microtubule attaches with the chromosome Okay, so they are attaching with this chromosome via this kinetic core, and after attaching the chromosome with this kinetic core, they are continuing having a tension in those opposite direction because we have two different poles and we have two different microtubule organizing cent center placed on uh, on those poles. So what they are doing, they have a, they are they are always putting and uh, pulling all those chromosomes in in a separate tensions, and when they have uh, done or uh, commit this tension in a higher plane, what they are doing, they are actually snatching those chromosomes and they are cleaving those chromosome joints, and they are separating the chromosomes from those kinetic core or centrosome regions. This is the very good example of that. So we are seeing in this uh, green color, these are the spindle fibers which are fluorescent. Uh, fluorescent is in green color, and the chromosomes are colored. in blue so the uh, green color spindles are actually attached with the kinetic core region of the chromosome and they are uh, pulling those chromosome towards themselves and finally they are pulling them uh, outwards and what is going on in this, in this phase the cell is going to have a stretched conformation so what we have we have a simple cell like that in in this metaphasic state so on this anaphasic state we have a cell like this so how the cell and why the cell is elongated or stretched because of this spindle 
esters. What this esters does, we have different sets of microtubules, and we have uh, my, actually these are the spindles uh, arranged uh, to arranged by microtubules to form them. So we have these different kinds of spindles. In, in normally the spindles which are attached with the kinetochore, we call them the kinetochore spindles, and we have different spindles which are not attached to kinetochores. They are uh, they are facing towards the membrane uh, of a cell. They are called the non-kinetochore microtubules, or they are called the Mm, the astral microtubules, those astral uh, spindles are very important to make the structure of cell from this to this because in this case we have this microtubule organizing center in both uh, in both these cases and what they are doing they are actually uh, pulling this microtubule organizing center towards uh, the cell membrane and, and uh, they are continuing this pulling and uh, when they are pulling it the cell is going to elongate it or stretched and cells have really elastic molecules and all this type of things because cell membrane is really elastic in these situations and they are really familiar with the situation so cell will not uh, will not be broken in this situation so it will going to divide and after some time so we know a phase called anaphase occurs and this anaphase phase uh, the chromosomes are divided from this kinetochore centrosome portion and they are taken out uh, to different poles and after the anaphase uh, we have telophase and what do we have in telophase in telophase this and uh, this these chromosomes are really again uh, uh, sets back to his earliest messy conformation and they have all those proteins to arrange themselves like histone proteins in uh, in the case of us and they are arranging and the nuclear envelope or nuclear lamina is forming and we are forming a new different two daughter nucleuses and not only uh, we are doing this but also cytokinesis takes place most of the time along with the telophase so also the cytoplasm is start to divide by Making cleavage furrow. So, what do you mean by cleavage furrow? It's a simple, a sim a simple, simplistic, dramatic presentation of we can say that those binary fission. We have talked about that uh, those unicellular organisms are going to divide, and what what they're going to do? They are actually making a cleavage among those cell cell membranes. Okay. So, again, in this case too, uh, these eukaryotic cells uh, during the the end of their mitotic division, they are actually making cleavages among these cell membranes, and after making those cleavages they are gonna make uh, crests and after that they are making the division okay and after all this we are having two different nucleuses and two separate cells with two different daughter nucleuses okay. now let us talk about the mitotic spindle because these are a very important part of the cell division because they assure uh, the attachment of uh, the kinetochore with uh, with them to make sure that the chromosomes will separate really uh, really uh, good manner okay so what you have here here is a sister chromatids so we have du duplicated chromosomes here so the sister chromatids out there so the spindles are attached so how the spindles will attach so we have uh, this we have these chromosomes and when we have this chromosome we have an attachment side we call it the kinetochore. This kinetochore it is attached. It is attaching all the time. Uh, what do you mean by this? We have this tubulin proteins which are forming and releasing. So we have plus side, we have negative side, all these things going on. So this tubulin is going to dissociate, and new tubulins is going to form, and all this thing is going on all the time. And when it have uh, this kinetochore attached to it, it is going to pull these things up because a regular tension is going on, and these esters are helping them to separate separate uniquely separate in a equal equal distribution because remember we have we have a th 23rd pair of chromosomes so you need to separate those chromosomes really uh, good manner so if if, if we have uh, 21 chrom uh, 21 pairs of chromosome in one cell uh, or, or for example we have uh, so we, uh, let's talk about 46 chromosomes so, you, so let's talk about if we have a, a 40 uh, for example if we have suppose 47 chromosomes in one uh, and uh, in, uh, one chromosome short in other cell that will make the difference because we are making duplication of all these chromosomes we are making it in many so we have 47 and we have a 40 uh, 45 I think so this kind of division will create trouble 
because one chromosome extra or one chromosome deletion will make different syndromes, different diseases and those diseases will be fatal and lethal because as we know in this genetic level this is the margin for error is so small so because we have those nucleotide sequences all the time if we change one nucleotide sequence if we change one nucleotide sequence that will make a difference and that will make something called a mutation and this mutation we have a different sets of functionality of that cell now okay so, so for example in case of a red blood cell we have a normal set of uh, nuclear uh, when nucleotide sequence in our in the DNA, a simple change in that uh, is re results to form a different um, different proteins and the different protein structures are going to aggregate together to make a different set of different uh, different set of uh, red blood cell and the result of it is a sickle cell anemia. Okay, so that the result will be diversity and that's why it's very important to separate these chromosomes evenly and the even separation is provided by these microfic spindles. So, so they, again, this is the kinetochore uh, micro, mic, microtubules uh, or my kinetochore spindles because these are attached to kinetochore, and with the spindle, we, have the, we call it the polar spindles or ester spindles, which are actually interacting with the cell membrane. Okay, and the movement uh, is provided by the kinetochore microtubules towards the opposite poles because if we cut. Uh, this is an experiment that that has that has been performed many years ago. If we cut one of these microtubules with laser beam, it will go into one end. If so it will go into scattered into this cytoplasmic space. That's that means the spindles are actually holding the structures together. So now let's uh, closer look at the cytokinesis. So in case of plant cells, the cytokinesis occurs by producing this. Uh, sorry, in case of animal cells, the cytokinesis is done by this cleavage by formation of the cleavage furrow so what do we mean by the cleavage furrow we have a cell here we have a cell membrane here what we are doing we are actually making an engulfing region like that and we are making something like that so when we are making something like that we are actually using our microtubules we are using those actin filaments which actually maintain the structure of our cell to to make an overgrowth in a in two different places by making a valley in between them and by doing this what we are creating we are creating a furrow like this so they are really extremely good uh, when you look at them uh, this is uh, uh, this is how it is done so contractile ring is formed between them so it is contracting all the time and that is done by remember actin proteins those actin proteins hel are helping to make this cleavage furrow and after the making of this cleavage furrow this furrow is going to move towards the opposite pole and and this 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 kind of furrow is actually ma is made in two different or uh, two opposite sides and they are actually go towards themselves and they are finally meet with each other and they finally divide uh, the cell cytoplasm into two different cells okay two daughter cells that is uh, the cytokinesis and plant cells uh, they do not have any kind of those furrows because they are not depend upon uh, those uh, actin filaments uh, because of their rigidity and they, they depends on the rigidity because it depends on the wall cell wall structure because they have the cell wall which is really rigid in nature th which is made up of cellulose and they also have some proteins some specialized proteins that are that are going to form the form that those uh, very important molecules or special molecules that is going to make a cell plate in between uh, the, the one cell okay they are making a cell plate in between that and then when they are making the cell plate they are actually separating the cytoplasm of one cell into two different parts so remember that the volume will be smaller when a cell is divided into two cells so if we have a bigger volume cell and we will divide into two daughter cells the daughter cell will be smaller in volume okay and then the daughter cell has to have a structure like this they has to be they has to grow so this is another important consideration uh, when you're talking about the cell division so uh, in case of cell division not only cell division is important but also the growth is important the growth of the cell is also important and the growth of the cell is provided by some very uh, special molecules that are called the growth factor or cellular growth 
factors or CGFs for example this growth factor actually help the cells to grow so what do you mean by a cell to grow when a cell is growing that means we're forming new cell membranes we're forming different cell proteins for example we're forming uh, actin filaments we're forming microtubules that we, which are actually uh, and which are actually make the cell to be made to have a bigger structure okay so why this cells gonna divide and it's another important ex uh, question that why the cells gonna divide because let me uh, go here so it's a, it's another uh, illustration of the mitosis in plant cell so why a cell needs to divide into this 